you spend the night here? Look. You said you couldn't sleep, you needed company. So I volunteered. Yeah. What did I give you? My earrings? My bracelets? You said you would take care of me later. So, we're friends. What if I give you a check to stay? Which do you prefer? Same amount either way? This is... I know what it is. Which will it be? Sleep well. Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. And here's the news from the poor little rich girl front. Barbara Hutton denied a suicide attempt, saying life is wonderful, as she dated legendary Latin lover Porfirio Ruberosa. Meanwhile, he denied a romance with Zsa, Zsa Gabor, only to fly out to Las Vegas to see her, saying, we will wed, and promptly lost $50,000 on the tables. Well, Babs Hutton paid off his gambling debts, but before the press has stopped running on that one, Barbara took the fifth and married the lover boy. Then they went off on a spending spree that would make her eyebrows curl. Babs bought him 64 silk suits in one day. Boy, was he a looker. Babs didn't stop there. She bought him a converted B-25 bomber for a wedding present. Ruby promptly used it to fly back to Zsa, Zsa And so, Babs sold the plane. Well, after that, folks, it was curtains for Babs. And Ruby. Property settlement. How much is he getting? Come on, Miss Hutton, have you divorced Ruby Rosa? Divorce him? What's the property on, settlement? Oh, you married him, all right. For that seven and a half weeks of marital bliss, he collected a million dollars in gifts and two and a half million in cash. That's more than sixty-six thousand dollars a day. Did he at least live up to his legend? Oh, 
Admiral. Happy Thanks birthday. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Sure, we miss it for the world. Just a casual little pool party, huh? With, complete with black tie, champagne, and caviar. Must have been your mother's idea. Yeah, well, it sure wasn't mine. Hmm. I, uh, got a little something for you. Thanks, General. You're welcome. It's a million. So, where's that wonderful mother of mine? She's over 30 minutes late for her own party, and there's something special that I wanted to meet. Well, here's an old friend of ours. My ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Don't get to be 21 more than once. At least I didn't. Oh. Thank you. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Jimmy. Good to see you. You too. Listen, excuse me a minute, would you, fellas? Sure. Jimmy, the invitation said black tie. Now, come on, look, even I put a monkey suit on for the occasion. But your mother said evening dress. Anyway, I am prepared for both. <laughs> Where's your mother? I don't know. She, uh... Didn't bother to make it on my 21st birthday. Oh, don't worry, she will. Yeah, when? When everyone's left? Alice, Jimmy, look, there's someone I want you to meet. Jill? This is my cousin, Jimmy. Jimmy? My fiance. Hello. Hello? Hi. You're what? Jill St. John. Jill's an actress. Really? Well, I read somewhere where you were a starlet. When did you become an actress? When I learned to play house with your cousin. When did you? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you think your next father is here today? Uh, that's, that's, that's very funny, Jimmy. <laughs> if I were you, I'd put my money on Gottfried von Krom. Von Krom, my God, why? Because he's kind and he's gentle. Your mother should have married him years ago. Speaking of which, what are you planning to do with your life? Well, I can tell you what's going to be an important part of it. Mm-hmm. Yes? What? it be more fun to show you. You free tomorrow morning? Yes. Good. Oh, uh... Bring Mother. She'll like it. Here are some scenes from the concluding episode of Poor Little Rich Girl. I have no magic. My grandfather said there would be magic. Where is my magic? Face it, you never wanted a child. How can you say that? You son of a bitch. Yeah, you're right. I'm a real son of a bitch. No man could love you. Don't you think I know that? <laughs> said there would be magic. Where is my magic? Face it, you never wanted a child. How can you say that? You son of a bitch. Yeah, you're right. I'm a real son of a bitch. No man could love you. Don't you think I know that? <laughs> hey, 
It was a lucky April shower. It was the most convenient dawn. I found a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. The rain continued for an hour. I hung around for three or four. Around a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. She was selling china. And when she made those eyes, I kept buying china until the crowd got wise. Incidentally, if you should run into a shower, just step inside my cottage door and meet the million dollar baby from the five and ten cent store. The rain continued for an hour. I hung around for three or four. Around a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. She was selling china, and when she made those eyes, I kept buying china until the clouds got white. Incidentally, if you should run into a shower, step inside my cottage door and meet. My million dollar baby from the five and ten cent store. It's a pleasure and an honor to meet one of the greatest tennis players in the world. It's a pleasure and an honor to meet one of the most famous women in the world. Though her fame hardly lives up to her looks. There's nothing to worry about. It's not that. I just heard from Carl in Berlin. The Gestapo have arrested Von Kraft. He's one of nature's losers. Godfrey, listen to me. Whatever it takes to get you out, I'll do. A small fortune. <laughs> I have a big one. Now open them and then tell me that you don't believe in fairy tales. Oh, my God. Give a woman who has everything, needs nothing, and is more beautiful than the rose itself. How are you feeling, Francis? I've never been happier. How was the honeymoon? It's gonna last another 30 or 40 years. We always share the same room. And we will again, my prince, when I feel up to it. You need pills to go to bed, you need pills to get up, you need pills to go out, you need pills to stop you from shaking. What I don't need is a petulant boy telling me what to do. Okay, Lance, what's her name? Who? Oh. Suppose I don't like her. I saw it with... <laughs> I slipped. You've been doing a lot of that lately. Let's go, Sam. Lance. Come on. Lance. Lance. At the end of the 15th lap, car number two, driven by Bernardo, is closely followed by Reventlow in the scare. Magowitz moves up to fourth place, but Bernardo's still holding. He's holding on with Reventlow closing. Mm-hmm.
Take it right easy. All right. Here we are, kid. All right. Oh, don't try to get up. Don't. Come on. Right. Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. scared as heck. Well, I'm sorry. Please, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're too old for this. Oh, baby. Oh, your hand. Yeah, it's Help okay. Look, I'm going. I'm Help going, him. Mom. Jill, come here. I want you to promise me something. That race car. Lance will never get into another racing car. How can I promise you that? I don't care how. I'm not in charge of his life. Even if we were married, I still wouldn't just tell him what to do. Threaten him. Say you'll never see him again. Look, I'll give you these. Just promise me. I don't want You'll these. never race again? Barbara, I love him. I'll try. But if I can't do it for love, I'm certainly not going to do it for money. your hand. You cannot buy my life. Never have afforded this house on my own, Barbara. Thank you. What am I going to do without you? Just what you've always done. Just what you felt like doing. Was I that difficult? I've been with you for nearly 40 years. How difficult could it have been? <laughs> we had some good times, didn't we? Too many to count. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, Barbara. People are so unfair to you. And you are so generous. Winfield House cost you millions of dollars, and you gave it to the American government for the ambassador to live in. You sent a million dollars to the Free Friends during the war, and who knows of it? General de Gaulle, for one. And all the checks for hospitals and schools. Everything is kept so secret. Only the parties and the jewels and the clothes, they're not kept so secret. Why, Barbara, why not tell the people all the good that you do? It doesn't make any difference. I'd say I only did it for the publicity. Anyway, I am going to make me happy. You really are going to marry Baron von Kram? Yes, I'm going to marry him. Maybe he can help me find what I'm looking for. When we get back from our honeymoon, you'll come to Paris and stay with us. It'll be just like old times. I've been around the world ten times keeping up with you. Loving it and hating it. I can't keep up anymore. Sometimes I can either. <laughs> then sit for a while. Ow. I get scared sitting. It's as if something's chasing me. It's gonna catch up. Oh, Barbara, you always need to seek the magic, even when you know all the tricks. <laughs> Nobody knows that better than I do. Tinky, <laughs> Oh. Darling? Godfrey, I'm back. Put those in there, please. I'm so sorry. Did you know it? You knew that. 
I just didn't think I'd have to confront it this way. Gene and Morley call, what's his name? You know, the hairdresser, Franceschi. I want to have a great party. Janine, à qui portez-vous ce verre? Oh, madame. Janine, where's the baroness? In the bedroom, madame. Is that for her? Oui. I'll be back in a minute. Darjan and Sasha. Oh, Sasha. I've taken over the front door and mm -hmm. Josephine's going to dance for us. Oh. They'll be talking about it for four months. Wonderful, yeah. darling. You know how Morley and I just love your party. Yeah. Morley. Where is he? Oh, he's outside. Where's Godfrey? Mm. Let's not talk about that. That could be too, too bizarre. Perhaps so. When your chauffeur brought us the invitation, he gave me this. He said it was a present from you. Yes, why aren't you wearing it? Oh, it's very sweet of you, darling, but I couldn't possibly. It must be worth a fortune. You loved it when I wore it at the Sanderson's. Oh, home. no, it's beautiful, darling. But diamond bracelets are just not my style. You know me, the original pearls and sweater girl. Pearls? I've got pearls. You want pearls? Silly, Take pearls. Darling. They it's just that sometimes you can be a little over generous. It's a bit overpowering. One's always afraid to admire anything of yours or simply give it away. Others don't seem to object to it. When I gave Pauline my flat in the south of France, she loved it. Pauline is... Pauline. And the Kennerleys are different. You think I'm trying to buy you? Is that what you think? That I can buy anyone I want? Gee, surely you and Morley can't be bought. After all these years, Barbara, you should know. Well, I don't. Having a mass of money doesn't let you know. Whether you're being generous or buying them. Don't you see that? It's a problem I might rather enjoy. Oh, would you? You know how I feel. Worth millions. Worth nothing. Hi. Can I come in? Morley. God. Jean's being incredibly boring. I need cosseting. Cosseting? <laughs> Remember, that's what court wanted to do to me. Would you like to cosset me, Morley? Barbara. Would you like to come with me for a week? I mean, we should have done it years ago. You don't mean that. Don't tell me what I mean. I'm sick and tired of tippy toying around this frumpy little house for all of yours. We should have been lovers as well as friends. And we will be. That's enough. I'm not going to stand here and. And what? You'll stay. Because I'm paying. I'm paying for you all. Barbara, stop it. I don't know what's happened to make you behave like this, but you just listen to me. We, Morley and I, loved you. Part of us always will. But we can't stand around and watch you humiliate yourself like this. Then don't watch! <laughs> don't watch! You're such a hypocrite, Jean. Pauline is Pauline. You and Morley have done well by me. Remember that! Drink up, everybody! Non, ne vous inquiétez pas, Barbara est juste un peu nerveuse aujourd'hui. I thought she'd phone. Apologize. It's probably better this way. I don't want to be around for the end. You? She doesn't want us around. That was the whole point.
Janine. Madame, pack my bags. You were exquisite. She wants the bracelet. <laughs> oh, why shouldn't she want it? When you're young and beautiful, you should have anything you want. Oh, you clumsy fool. Pick it up. Excuse me, Miss Hutton. I think you dropped this. Hey, wait a minute, Buster. Did she actually call you Buster? I think she actually did. Allow me. What are you doing? She gave that to me. Would you please just leave us alone? We both will. Shall we? Good night, Pauline. You're a wonderful time with these wonderful people. Thank you, darling. I never. She was going to give it to me. Oh, I want a drink. Who are you? James Douglas, the third. James Douglas the Third. Are there any more at home like you? No, just me. I have a trust fund and I can live wherever I like, Miss Hutton. Miss Hutton? Uh, Miss Hutton? <laughs> I think you can call me Barbara, don't you? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. There's a story they tell here in Venice about the young Casanova and a beautiful but haughty lady, a duchess. Careful, I used to be a princess. <laughs> Don't interrupt. <laughs> Casanova and the duchess were both traveling and by chance happened to be staying overnight at the same inn. Naturally, he was fascinated, but try as he might, he could not find a way to meet her. Finally, in desperation, he crept silently into her room in the middle of the night and made passionate love to her. Still, not a word spoken between them. Go on. The next morning, as the Duchess was taking her breakfast at the inn, Casanova saw his chance. He strode confidently to her table, and with a bow and a flourish, he began to speak. Madam, pause. The Duchess turned and spoke to him for the first time. Young man, an amorous encounter does not constitute a formal introduction. And with that, she turned on her heels and left. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Barbara. James. 